Hey guys, welcome back to Medical Coding with Blue. Today's episode is all about my tips for concentration in medical coding and also tips for speaking with your providers. So if you're brand new to my channel, welcome. I am Blue, I'm a medical coder. Okay, this episode was inspired by a viewer comment. She asked, she said, well, Blue, I'm having trouble concentrating uh, when I'm reading and sometimes I just can't seem to maintain focus. What do you do and how do you maintain focus? What is some advice that you can have for me? Well, <laughs> let us begin. A uh, couple of disclaimers first. It is raining outside, so if you hear a loud thunderclap, never fear, I am still here. <laughs> uh, the second thing is, uh, these are my tips. This is generally what I do. Uh, you have to remember that I am a nerd, number one, first and foremost, nerd. And uh, I have been conditioned for years and I have done things to test my concentration abilities and things like that. So these are some of the things that work for me. They may not work for you. It may be just like, this doesn't work for me at all. Do whatever helps you to concentrate best. That is the best way to go. For some people, they need to have complete quiet. For me, complete quiet does one of two things. <laughs> it either really helps me in the moment, or if it's too long, then I start to lose focus because it is too quiet. I have to have some kind of noise, some kind of white noise in the back. Um, and a lot of times, you know, and I discovered that uh, <laughs> before I finished my thought. Uh, I did discover that too much quiet is detrimental to my ability to be able to do all of this stuff because when the pandemic kicked off and I was at home, it was completely quiet. Now, my day consists of a lot of interaction with my providers. So because of this, uh, I have been conditioned for a long time. I've had my own space for a little over three years. And so I'm able to have that freedom of having my providers come in whenever they please. And because of this, I have adopted a sprint, <laughs> a sprint low type of mode. Now, what I mean by this is when I talk with my providers, that's a low, right? That's a low, it's like a wave, right? So it's low. And I'm talking with them and they ask me questions or whatever, and then they leave. Now it's in sprint mode. So I get into the records and I start reading and I start really concentrating on what I'm doing because I know in just a little while <laughs> I'm going to get a knock at the door or somebody's going to appear at the door and be like, Hey blue, uh, I have a question about this. <laughs> then it goes back into, uh, the low mode. <laughs> and then when they leave, I go into sprint mode. So yes, this is unusual. And sometimes it's not always busy at my door. I mean, sometimes it is literally like it'll be maybe one or two people and then that's it. And sometimes it's nobody. So in those days, the door to my office is still open. So I still get a lot of like the outside traffic that I hear, uh, but that helps me to be able to focus even more unless somebody calls me and then I have to break concentration. But if I really need to focus and if there is a very difficult chart, then I will close the door and just really get into what I'm doing. But for me, that helps me to concentrate when I'm working in like sprints. Because when I'm working in sprints, everything is focused and I know that, okay, I have this time and I can really use this to focus on what I'm doing. So when I have to stop, it gives me a break anyway. A lot of times what happens when people start to lose focus is because they're focusing too hard. If you are staring at the screen and not moving, which can happen by the way, <laughs> uh, you get into this mode of like, you're going through the records and you're reading and reading and reading and you don't blink. You forget to blink. You forget to uh, move your head around. Uh, you have to physically move because we have a very sedentary job. Yes. Uh, but it is up to us to get creative when we are having to move. So sometimes if you need to get up and stretch and sometimes I will do that, I will get up and stretch. Sometimes I will move the monitor so that I can look down on it and then I'll just work standing up. So it really does depend and having that sort of uh, option of moving around really does help because if you sit all day, you know, of course you can end up with pains, <laughs> all kinds of pains. And as you get older, uh, you really notice those pains. <laughs> so uh, I have 
sometimes I have actually been into what I'm doing and I get so focused and concentrated. If I have no break and I get up, I'm like, whoa, that was a bad idea. <laughs> but it's something that just happens. So since it doesn't happen often, I am okay with that. You know, working with orthopedics and podiatry, I see a lot of injuries and I see a lot of very interesting uh, encounters. So, because people hurt themselves in different ways, or there's really interesting things that happen with organic conditions as well. And stuff that I don't even know, because a lot of times, even when I am working, I'll have to research at the same time, like, what is this? And, and is, this, is this symptom a part of this disease? I'll have to look that stuff up because I don't know everything, <laughs> uh, but I have to occasionally stop and do that. So with the way that my computer station is set up, you know, I have the monitor and I have the other monitor up and then I have another monitor for my uh, emails. So that is just one, it just kind of stays up. So that way in case I get an email from my boss, you know, or something else, I can respond right away. Because if you have it minimized, <laughs> it's, you can really lose track of it. I've done that where I've had it minimized and I didn't look and all of a sudden I've got a bunch of emails. I'm like, okay, <laughs> clearly I wasn't paying attention, you know, but uh, my focus always is the priority is on the records and coding. So that's part of what I do. And again, how I've been conditioned, you know, for some people, like I said, they need complete quiet. And for me, complete quiet just doesn't work. Um, I do listen to music when uh, I do get a signal <laughs> in the office, uh, I will listen to country music. Sometimes I will listen to rock. You know, sometimes I will listen to just that kind of music like Aerosmith and things like that. That's what I do. And sometimes it's ACDC because sometimes you just have to have that, <laughs> that tempo music in order to, you know, really get into the groove. And so that's what I do. And sometimes when I have the door closed and I'm blasting ACDC or something else, <laughs> I'll get a knock on the door and be like, hey man, this is some good music, you know? But it's not so loud that everybody else in the house I can hear it, you know? It's just like I'm in the, in the zone. <laughs> and uh, the doors are pretty heavy, so you can't really hear uh, anything that's going on in my office outside. So, you know, that really does help when I want to crank the radio up. So that's what I do. Um, and for me, when I, when I've taken breaks, uh, I will come into work and I will eat my breakfast at my desk. And then, uh, about eight o'clock, I will go and go pick up a coffee and that gives me a break in between. So I've done a little bit of work <laughs> and I don't start off with records that I know are going to be really like mentally intensive. And that's another thing too, when you are working, particularly if you're assigned to a clinic and you know which, um, which providers are a little bit easier to get through, which ones are a little less complicated, <laughs> then you can just sort of start with those or however your facility has you going. Um, we do have a protocol that we are supposed to follow. However, when I follow this protocol, it really slows me down. So what I try to do is balance what they want versus what I need, uh, which is I need to be able to get through this many records for me to feel like I'm being productive. So sometimes I will wait <laughs> to start um, because we have like reports that are like for errors and things like that, that the system will see right away. And so we're supposed to work those first. But for me, if I'm looking at errors first thing, it's going to slow me down because I, mentally I need to get in that perfect frame of mind in order to start looking at errors, if there's any, right? And so again, uh, I try to make a balance of what my boss wants versus what I need. And like I said, uh, I'll start with a provider that I know that I can just get through really quickly. And when I do that, I'm able to be productive right away. So that makes me feel <laughs> like I'm focused and concentrated. So sometimes it's a trickery of the mind too, because when you are staying too focused, uh, you can lose sight of your goal. And for me, if I've already gotten a good amount in or even just started, uh, then I know I'm going to be okay. It sets the tone for the rest of the day, right? And so after my coffee, <laughs> the coffee break in between is the, the thing that really gets me going. So once I get back and I start drinking my coffee, the coffee kicks in and I start to mentally wake up even more. 
and then I'm able to start working on the harder stuff. And when I'm able to tackle that harder stuff, you know, it just makes me feel like I have accomplished something. So again, that helps with concentration. Sometimes when we feel distracted, it's because we feel like we're not uh, completing our goals or we're not uh, working as efficiently as we should be. And that can get very discouraging because you're like, well, you know, I felt like I haven't done anything. And so giving yourself those breaks in between where you're starting with something mentally easier first thing in the morning and then you're getting into like okay now I can work on my harder stuff uh, that does help so and then of course having the breaks in between with my providers that come in and a lot of times people will tell me well, blue doesn't it irritate you no it doesn't irritate me at all when my providers come in you know why because they are my priority and I've always made them my priority I've always told them guys you all are my priority if you're happy, I'm happy. If you're not happy, then we need to figure something out because I can't have you uh, not being happy. <laughs> and it's about having that good communication. And I always tell them too, and this is something that, you know, building those relationships is going to help you. It's going to help you because their documentation is going to get a lot more streamlined the more you communicate with them. And the more they know that you're there to support them, to be their teammate, the better off you'll be. Because again, uh, it's going to make the query process a lot easier and sometimes next to nothing. There are certain providers that I don't have to query them at all because their documentation is so perfect that I can just fly right through. And um, I've rescued clinics in the past who have had providers that just did not want to listen to the coders that were in there. The coders sometimes were at fault because they did not reach out to that provider or they got very frustrated at the first uh, impasse that they had. Uh, so they never tried again. And so when I got in there, <laughs> it, it was a struggle because they, they, the provider built up a defense and they're like, okay, well, you're a coder. Immediately, they think negatively because they've already had a negative experience with a coder. And whether or not the coder meant it to be that way or not, that's the way that that provider is thinking. Or sometimes that provider may be coming in from a different facility and they're used to how they had no contact with coders at their other facility. So who are you? Why are you coming to me? I've been doing everything right all these years <laughs> and now you're telling me that it's wrong. So that's where, again, building those relationships and introducing yourself first before you start sending any queries will do a lot of wonders. I have talked to so many coders that have said, Blue, this provider just doesn't like me. And, you know, all I've ever done was query. OK, so did you ever meet that provider? Did you go to their face and shake their hand? Did you guys talk on the phone? No, I just started sending them emails. <sighs> you can't do that, guys. You have to literally introduce yourself. The providers are never, almost never, I will say this, almost never, 95 percent of the time, they will never reach out to you. You have to be the one to be the uh, the one that comes up to them and says, hey, how you doing? Because it is that simple action of, hey, how you doing? That gets the ball rolling. Uh, I, I learned this, you know, and it, 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 it was it was a hard lesson to learn because I talk about this all the time. When I first started as a medical coder, I thought, oh my gosh, you know, they're so educated. They don't want anything to know that I say or, or anything I say, they don't, they don't want to know, you know? <laughs> so uh, that was how I thought. I always thought that. And then I was educated <laughs> by a provider who kind of went around the back way uh, to get my attention because he, instead of just coming to me like I had asked, um, because I did email him whenever he did really good on a record and I never had to worry about him But he apparently was upset because I never made the effort to go to his office Talk to him and say hi and, and let him know what else he can do to improve and when I found this out ooh. <laughs> Let's just say the Texan in me came out <laughs> So, you know, I'm telling him, you know, I'm talking to this provider like I would talk to you guys, you know, um, and yes, my nature is very blunt. I am not rude when I'm speaking to them, but at the same time, hey, let's get this together. So 
I did tell that provider, you know, I heard from a little birdie that we have a problem with our communication skills. <laughs> and so he's like, oh, no, no, no. And so he's, he's just explaining to me that, you know, he would like to have a little bit more interaction. And, you know, as I explained, I had emailed and I had told him he was doing good. I mean, I just didn't know what he was actually looking for. And that's why I asked him the direct question, what are you looking for? And he says, well, I know that you're saying that I'm, I'm, I document well, but I know I can get better. So I said, okay. And so it was a matter of really kind of looking at his documentation and there was areas that he could get better. So <laughs> we started working it out. But the thing when you're talking to providers is you have to be very direct. None of this, I'm sorry, uh, I, I just wanted to, no. Never, ever, 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 ever apologize when you haven't done anything wrong. And I've seen that time and time again, and it just, <laughs> just flames me up because you should never apologize if you have nothing to be sorry for. You can say, pardon me. You can say something to that effect, but an alternative wording, but you never apologize because you have nothing to be sorry for. Doing something like that sets the wrong tone. It also sets this, okay, well, I'm meek. I'm a meek person. And when you're dealing with an alpha personality, you have to be just as alpha, not aggressive, but you do need to be like to the point. What is your point? That is what they're often saying because they don't want sometimes to have a lot of small talk, get to the point. And they will tell you sometimes get to the point, especially if they are getting frustrated with you. I have literally been in on a conversation with another coder where the provider literally told her get to the point because she kept going around and she, she just got so nervous that she just couldn't help herself. So I rescued her and I started explaining it's like this, sir. And so we went into this conversation. Okay, that, that'll work. Whatever you say. We'll, we'll work it out. Okay, good. <laughs> you know, the, the thing is, learning how to be direct is, you know, the big part of it. You have to think of what you want to say beforehand, and then you got to cut that down to about half. And then when you get down to about that half, you need to really think about what are the most important parts of this half. And then you got to get down to a quarter. That's how much attention you're going to get from them in a very short frame of time because if you try to draw things out and you try to to uh, really explain things sometimes uh, i've heard of coders saying well i brought them uh, like a big stack of their notes no when you have an issue with a provider it needs to be one thing one thing only well blue no 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 they have multiple problems Yes, but you're not going to be able to solve multiple problems all at once, right? So the thing that you can do is start leaving those uh, breadcrumbs. <laughs> Work on one problem first. Then when that problem is solved, then you go to the next issue with that provider. And then you go to the next issue. And that's the only way. Because if you give them manageable chunks like that, they will, they will follow you. But if you sit here and you try to overwhelm them with all of these things that they're doing wrong, you're doing this, 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 and this, and this wrong. They don't know. They don't know what we know. And that's the part of it, okay? You, you have to understand that they're doctors. They're meant to document what they, what they have. But they don't know that if they're documenting fully, that's your job to be able to come in and say, okay, well, it is missing this. Uh, uh, what are the, what are the details that are missing here? And so that's when communicating with them and getting them to give you the really full picture, uh, is what is going to help you. Because a lot of times my providers in the beginning, they would document the injury. They would say it was pain and then they would, uh, select a fracture code, but it's just like, okay, where is the fracture? Where is the final diagnosis of this fracture in this documentation? It can't just be a code that you select in the box, right? It has to be documented. It has to be supported. And so they were like, oh, okay. So they started writing this stuff out. How did the patient get hurt? Oh, well, I didn't know we had to do that. There's actually not a standard for that 
However, it does make a huge difference if you have a patient who has been injured on the job or has been in a car accident or something like that. It needs to show the full consistent picture throughout their care. So that's why those details are so important. And so that's why I always tell my providers, I, I, if you give me too much, we'll work on that because you don't need to do all these details, right? Well, you know, it was the third Monday of this and this and this, <laughs> you don't have to do that. Uh, but what you do have to do is give me a little bit of description. Let's work on it this way. And that's giving them just a little bit at a time. And that really does help because then you're not overwhelming them. You know, and a lot of times coders will say, well, you know, I'm only emailing them when they do something wrong. You can't do that either. Because if you do that, that's how they're going to be conditioned to you. This coder is only giving me the bad information and they're only telling me that I'm doing wrong. Providers don't like to be told that they're doing wrong. If you see something really incredible, I can't tell you how many times uh, I have seen an incredible note. Okay. Now the doctor that I was talking about before, I often refer to him as Dr. X. Now I haven't talked about Dr. X in quite a while, but I will say this when I had this one really incredible note, and I'm not going to go into the note because it was so amazing. Right. But let's just say that it was, a, it was an amazing note. The detail was there. The code selection was right on. I was so excited. I literally ran over to his office and he happened to be in his office that day. And he's like, uh, and I'm like knocking on the door and he's like, Hey, what's up? And, you know? And I'm like, Oh my gosh. And so we start talking about this encounter. I'm like, you did wonderful. Like that was literally a unicorn note. And I refer to really awesome notes as unicorn notes because you, you see them, but they're very rare, right? There's great notes, but then you see those really awesome notes that are just like the epitome of what a really good note is. And you see how excited I'm getting <laughs> just the tone in my voice, because when I see them, it's just, it's such an incredible thing. And it's not anything that is just run of the mill. It's really something that is unusual and just something that is really, truly awesome. So, you know, when you have moments like that, it's just like to share it with the provider be like, this is why it was great, you know? And so <laughs> they may laugh at you, which is fine, you know, uh, cause Dr. X had a good chuckle at me. He's like, he goes, you're such a nerd. I go, I know. I said, I know, but I, I can't help it. And I said, when I see stuff like this, this is examples. These are like examples that you want for the future. Uh, when you're either training new providers or you're training new coders, you know, these are some of the things that, you know, these are real life examples that, you know, the PHI gets blacked out. So that way you can use this as an example. Uh, and he just starts laughing, but that, uh, having that moment, you know, really started to build our relationship because he was just like, you take this seriously. I've never met a coder that takes this stuff seriously. And I go, it's, it's, it's not just, this is a job. This is actually a career for me. So there's a difference there. But I said, just, just having that where we had that, that exchange, you know, that was really good. And it was really good for building trust. So he was like, okay. So every time he saw me, it wasn't always, oh, it's only going to be bad news. It was always sometimes good news too. So that's just my advice anyway. And I'm about out of time. <laughs> uh, so I hope you guys have enjoyed this. Give yourselves a break. If you feel like you are losing concentration, take a break, take a walk, take five, <laughs> come back to it. Uh, put it on pause and go to the next one and come right back to it. So that way you can feel like you're still being productive and you're not losing that concentration. So I will see y'all on the next episode. Like, subscribe, and hit that, hit that thumbs up button. And I will see y'all next time. Bye.